Blog Talk Radio. Steve B's Media Production is a part of the Shellcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other help I know. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Good evening, wherever you are in the world listening to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. This radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B's Media Production Studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege 
be able to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for any of my co-hosts or my special guests on this radio show, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Or you can give me a call at Stevie B's Media Production Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. And if you need any assistance in locating the congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and stay along with us here on What Our Word from the Lord radio show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. I'm most crying Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will be with my special guest speaker, Chris Edwards, and also my co-host, Lou Gibbers, as they break unto us the bread of life. Also, we ask your blessings upon my special guest in the community corner, Joe Jackson, Joe Johnson, as he serves our community as well with his various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. We pray that you will bless them and their families that support their efforts as well. Father, we pray that you will be with our listeners who are tuning in this radio broadcast via blog talk radio as well as through social media. We pray that they may listen well and that they may consider their eternal stance before you and that their hearts may be pricked. And it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are just so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross. For without such a sacrifice, we would not have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now, we ask you to forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of your will. Father, we pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us and love us all the days of our lives and that we have been faithful unto death. Father, we pray that you will save us. For us in Christ's name, we do ask it all. Amen. You are listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Our speakers in the first segment, my special guest speaker will be Chris, Chris Edwards. He serves with the McDonald Avenue Church of Christ there in Richmond, California. He's He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And in the community corner, my special guest is Joe Johnson. He's, he has a company called United Credit Services in Charlotte, North Carolina. He'll be telling us about his business and how he serves our community. And in the last segment, my co-host, Lou Gill, he serves as the evangelist for the Overbrook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles and open your minds and let's have a great show after the break. And that's what you hear be that of my special guest speaker, Chris Edwards. Enjoy the show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. All right, you worshipers. Worship. It's time to forget about all the trust the devil's brought in our life. Give it over to God. Yeah. I want you to know right now, it's this time. We got to give it praise. Let everybody worship. Come on. Come on, saints, he's worthy. Eradicate from your mind everything, everything, all the pain and suffering that your trouble made. He's worthy of the glory, giving the praise, yeah. 
to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my special guest speaker, Chris Edwards, and his subject, verbal communication. Thank you, Brother Stevie. Uh, I'd just like to uh, extend a cordial welcome to all of you listeners, uh, especially those that are members of the body of Christ. Uh, all over the land and sea, and it's uh, a pleasure always to come on the air with Brother Stevie B um, Productions and to be able to um, leave a little word today. Um, as uh, always, it's always a joyful experience, and I just uh, um, admire and, and enjoy the great work that Brother Stevie is doing in the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm from the McDonald Avenue Church of Christ in Richmond, California, and we have uh, four elders and three deacons active right now, and we have uh, several evangelists. I'm one, and I do teach uh, adult classes there um, and new convert classes, and so we're busy, and I'm active with podcast ministry uh, on uh, Spreaker.com, the Chris Edwards Show. So it's always a pleasure to um, bring a little word to um, help everybody in their spiritual walk and to encourage us uh, all in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, I'd just like to thank Stevie B once again, as always, um, to uh, come on the air and to um, be a great uh, support. Um, to um, these ministries that uh, that all these wonderful brethren are doing in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to open up in the uh, book of Ephesians um, uh, to start our uh, discourse for a few moments of our time this afternoon. In uh, chapter 4 and verse 29, the Apostle Paul wrote this epistle, one of his prison epistles, when he was incarcerated for the cause of Christ in the first century in AD 60 to AD 61. This was written from the city of Rome, and uh, Paul was there, um, and so he had wanted to encourage a lot of the uh, congregations like the church at Colossia, the church at uh, Galatia and also the uh, church at Ephesus in the will of God. So uh, Paul says in chapter 4 of Ephesians in verse number 29, he says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. In today's time, we see that uh, people are no longer blush about the 
communication and the verbal language that they use and the uh, things that they say, the things that influence their thinking and how they communicate, the constant um, of use of profanity and uh, the uh, constant um, just uh, language that they use that are so inappropriate. And uh, Paul wants to encourage us to be on guard about the language as believers, as Christians in the faith, that we need to watch the things that we say and the things that uh, um, the impression that we leave on others. Uh, we're going to talk about on, on, a, on this topic verbal communication. Verbal communication is so important that we as believers and children of God by faith in Christ Jesus be able to demonstrate that our speech should be seasoned with salt. Our speech should be seasoned with grace. And so we are encouraged to speak those things also which become sound doctrine and those things which are um, would bring glory to God. So the Apostle Paul wants to exhort us all like he did the church at Ephesus and uh, uh, letting us know how important it is to not have corruption in the form of our verbal communication. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, Paul tells the church of Colossae, he says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. How can we answer every man, especially we are charged an awesome responsibility as the kingdom of God, as the New Testament church, how can we give an answer to every man that asks of us of the reason of the hope that is in us? If we're using inappropriate language as Christians, whether we're at work, on our, you know, in a place of employment, or whether we're in just our recreational everyday life, or around friends and neighbors, then they won't, they won't be able to take our Christianity serious because our religion becomes uh, a vain. And so we have to uh, be on guard. We're talking about, once again, verbal communication. Verbal communication is so important. In a common culture that we have now where uh, people are using all different kind of, uh, uh, of foul language, um, uh, they don't blush at the things they say anymore. Uh, things, and, and sometimes Christians can get caught up and using inappropriate language. And so we want to encourage everybody to be um, mindful. Think about the things you say before we say them. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up dissension. But love covers all wrongs. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 and 12 from the NIV translation. Don't talk so much. You keep putting your foot in your mouth. Be sensible and turn off the flow. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19 from the Living Bible translation. When a good man speaks, he is worth listening to. But the words of fools are a dime a dozen. A godly man gives good advice, but a rebel is destroyed by a lack of common sense. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20 and 21, the Living Bible Translation. So we have to be on guard about the things which we say, the things which we, um, which we utter to other people. Because we are encouraged that we need to be slow to speak, slow to anger, and so that we are encouraged that uh, we don't want to cause uh, a quarrelsome uh, uh, kind of a, a conversation with others because um, reckless words pierce like a sword. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 from the New International Version or the NIV. 
we have to understand the importance of saying the things which will bring glory to God and watching the very things that we say. Did you not know that gossip, tailbearer, does so much damage to the Christian community, to the community of faith? You know, people talking and, and rumors and, and whether or not the things that are true or not, but when you gossip, gossip uh, is, is an abomination to the Lord. So we have to understand that we must wash the things. It does so much damage to relationships, especially in the New Testament church in the body of Christ. Those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, from the Living Bible Translation. We need to understand the exhortation of the fact that gossip does so much damage, and it could get you killed. It could get you, it could kill your influence. It could uh, destroy relationships with people. We're talking about our topic once again under consideration. Verbal communication, verbal communication. A witness who tells the truth saves good men from being sentenced to death, but a false witness is a traitor. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 25, from the Living Bible Translation. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit, Proverbs chapter four, fifteen, verse number 4. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 4 from the NIV translation. So we have to realize that we need to stay clear of foolish discussions, unprofitable, um, you know, uh, quarrel arguments and, and, and disagreements. Steer clear. The writer says, the Apostle Paul to Timothy, the young evangelist in the Christian faith, in second, his second epistle to Timothy, he says, steer clear of foolish discussions which lead people to sin of anger, which with each other, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, right after he says, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we're busy dividing the word of truth and we are, are, are permeating the word of God in our spirit, then it will, it will be able to be a, a, uh, a, a, it will create boundaries for us to be watchful by by the, the things the things that we say and the things that we utter to people. So let your conversation, Paul tells Titus, that it should be sensible and logical that everyone, uh, anyone who wants to argue with you will argue, uh, that argue will be ashamed of himself because there won't be anything to criticize in anything you say. That's why it's so imperative, it's so incumbent upon us that our speech should be seasoned with grace. Our speech should be seasoned with salt. That's Titus chapter 2, verse 8, the Living Bible Translation. Don't be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart, thing before God. God is in heaven, and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Amen, amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 2 from the NIV translation. So we are encouraged to, to realize that when we speak the wrong things, we are entrapping ourselves. So we have to be careful. We have to be wise-minded. We have to allow ourselves to be seasoned with grace in our speech, in our proclamation, in our communication. Remember, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That exhortation made by the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus. It says, to quarrel with a neighbor is foolish, 
A man with good sense holds his tongue. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 12, Living Bible Translation. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 13 from the NIV Translation. So we have to learn to weigh all our conversations before answering people. Let us check ourselves to make sure that we are saying the right things before or that we're thinking the right things before we say the things that we utter from our mouth because we have to understand that we will regret the things that we say. It will come um, back to, to haunt us if we are, are saying the wrong things to people and and then our influence will uh we will lose our gift of persuasion with others so we have to realize that it is important to to check ourselves and when even when people are saying things inappropriate to us as Christians we should steer clear to respond to them with foolish talk or with profane sayings because uh, that will not bring honor and glory to God because wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so we have to be concerned concerning these uh, very matters. A fool gets into constant fights. His mouth is his undoing. His words endanger him. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6 and 7 from the Living Bible Translation. So we have to understand the importance that when quiet words are of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouts of a ruler of fools. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 17 from the NIV translation. It's nothing worse than how to be in a company of foolish men or foolish women that are using inappropriate talk, inappropriate conversations, conversations. You remember I mentioned earlier how this current, this com, this common culture that we're in in the 21st century, the language that is being used, even in social media. You know the the you know different words. We 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 know we we can read between the lines. We know that the languages and the terms that are being used are inappropriate, especially for Christian. And 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 we have to understand that evil communication corrupt good morals or good manners. We are exhorted by the Apostle Paul when he wrote to the church in his first epistle to the church of Corinth and First Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 33. So we have to understand that if we're going to be in the right frame of mind and with the right speech, that we have to allow ourselves to be seasoned in our speech with grace and seasoned in our speech with salt. He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. Amen, amen. Isn't that the truth? Proverbs chapter 21 and verse number 23 from the NIV translation. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That is so true. Even in today's time, you know, when you're flying off the cuff, saying things that are inappropriate, are using um, foul language, are using something that can be offensive to others, those of us that are children of God, we have to be careful because we can lose our gift of persuasion in our language and use an inappropriate language. Whether I said before, whether we're in the workplace and, 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 and being and, 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 and supporting people that are using inappropriate gestures, are, uh, are, are, are bad jokes, smutty jokes, jokes that bring, uh, uh, that bring shame to God. And we up here laughing at stuff that's inappropriate. Well, we know that, that that's not a good thing. And so we need to be um, encouraged, like Paul tells us, that kind words 
what is considered to be speech that cannot be condemned, speech that is kindly entreated. We have to understand, like the proverbial writer says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24, from the Living Bible Translation, kind words are like honey, enjoyable, and helpful, helpful, help. There's nothing better than have wholesome words that can soothe you, that can be helpful to you, that can encourage you in your thought process. Because our mind is like a filter, and we have to filter in so many different things. And so we have to be careful by the programs we watch on television, the programs that we listen to, the movies we watch, the inappropriate language. You know, we have to filter so much garbage that is being told to us, and we have to be careful because we will wind up saying some stuff ourselves, and then we have to catch ourselves And we're going to have to repent because we have uh, said the wrong things that could be offensive to others. And so as as members of the churches of Christ, we have to be on guard with the fact that we need to make sure that our communication is not corrupt, that our communication is seasoned with salt, that our communication is seasoned with grace because we want to bring honor and glory to the kingdom of God because like a boss is angry with you, quiet spirit will quiet his bad temper. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Sometimes we work with people that can be really obnoxious or that can be really belligerent or can be really uh, 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 a, a, a piece of work. But we have to make sure that we are talking the right talk. We have to make sure, be professional, especially with people, your superiors on your job, even though they may be uh, using profanity or maybe using uh, uh, inappropriate language, but you be professional. We be professional, and we, because we represent the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we're representing the God of the universe So we want to make sure that we do everything possible that we will not bring shame to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that we will not be a reproach upon the New Testament church. So brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand the importance of what it is to have sound speech that cannot be condemned to say those things which would bring glory and honor to God. The man of few words and settled mind is wise. Therefore, even a fool is thought to be wise when he is silent. It pays him to keep his mouth shut. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 and 28 from the Living Bible Translation. Amen, amen. Yeah, we have to watch the things we say because we don't want to regret saying inappropriate things that will bring uh, 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 shame to not only God, but will bring shame to our conversation, our manner of life as Christians, children of God in the kingdom. And we have to understand the importance of what uh, these inspired writers are telling us on the pages of inspiration to let us know to learn to weigh all conversation before answering. We want to make sure that our thought process is in check. We want to make sure that we are are putting our foot in our mouth. We, we, We don't want to talk too much and say the wrong things or say or or be influenced by people that uh, that are evil, or that are corrupt, that are ignorant, or that are ungodly, or that display a pattern of unrighteousness, because we want to make sure that we check our verbal communication, which, again, our topic under consideration. We have to make sure that our conversation, our manner of life, and how we entreat others as believers, as children, as as just average Christians, we want to make sure that we are 
in the right frame of mind to be able to say the right things when we are in conversation with others in and out the body of Christ. Because kind words are like honey, enjoyable and healthful. All right. Amen. Amen. Isn't that so true? We have to guard ourselves because I'm reminded over in the book of James, James chapter chapter 1 and verse 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath. And then verse 20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we need to make sure that we monitor our tongue, monitor the things that we say. Because in James, also in chapter 3, verse number 2, he says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able to bridle the whole body. Amen, amen. So we want to make sure that we understand the importance of keeping our tongue in check. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boastful. Great, it boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Amen. That's verse 3 of chapter uh, 3 of James, the book of James. In verse 4, and it says, let me read verse uh, 4. He says, even so the tongue, this is uh Verse okay, verse verse four, verse four. Behold, also the ships which be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. You know, that sail is to guide that ship. And so we need to guide our tongues. Even so, in verse 5, he says, even so, James says in verse 5, the servant of God, even so the tongue is a little member that boasted great things. Behold, how great. A matter a like a little fire kindles. Okay, I read that earlier. I must have got misquoted the verse, but but nevertheless we got the point. And the tongue is a fire and a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defile defile it the whole body, and set it on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. So, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful. We have to be careful about the things we say, the things that we utter to other people, because I know no Christian, I never met any Christian that said they want to go to hell. I never met, and that's the whole purpose of Jesus, why Jesus died. Jesus died to keep us from going to hell. He's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29. We have to keep in mind that his whole purpose of coming to earth in the scheme of redemption was to provide man to escape from the plight of ourselves because we were doomed. We were doomed to uh, uh, for damnation. So Jesus says, Jesus, God, the Father, sent his son, our, our blessed Lord, 
into this world. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, believeth in him, should not perish, should not go to hell, have everlasting life, have eternal life. God loved us so much that he sent his son to show us the way back to God, to back to our rightful state that God had originally created us, for his whole purpose, to save us from ourselves, to, pre to prevent us from going to hell. You remember in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, he said, uh, 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 nay, he says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. we got to repent. The importance of repentance, once we realize that we understand the message of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, we need to understand the importance that we need to get our lives right. We need to allow the word of God to cut, prick our heart so that we can change for our mind from the, the practice of, of sin in our life, whether it's verbal or whether it's by our behavior. And we have to work toward getting ourselves in that and we have to allow God to come and to intervene in our lives through obedience of his gospel message. Having heard the word, do we believe it? Are we willing to repent of our sins? Like uh, Paul, when he came to the city of Athens, Greece, and he dwelt over there on Mars Hill with all those philosophers in the ancient times, in the first century, and they were citing Aristotle and Plato and all these uh, ancient philosophers of, uh, uh, in Greek and the Greek philosophy. Paul, and they admired the unknown God, and Paul had to reveal to them the God, this unknown God, to them, and that he, he overlooked your ignorance in times past. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent, Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. We need to repent. But before we repent, we need to, or before we get baptized for the remission of our sins, we need to acknowledge the sweetest name on mortal tongue, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that we're willing to commit our lives to him, that we're willing to confess Christ before men. We need to acknowledge the fact that we are crowning him in our lives. We're making him the Lord of our lives. We're making him the center of our lives. If we're willing to do that with a repentant heart, with a penitent heart, then we're willing to be baptized for remission of sins in a watery grave of baptism, and that when we come up out of that watery grave of baptism, we have a clean slate with God. We've been cleansed by the precious blood of the Lamb. We've been added to the New Testament church because the church is purchased by the blood of Christ, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. We are added to this New Testament body of Christ. We are added to the New Testament church. We are in the faith. We are in the Christian faith. And we need to understand that we are called to that we can talk right and that we can behave right and that we can live right. And so if there's any of us that have maybe fallen short since the last time we have petitioned under God or consulted God for our spiritual condition, this is also a time that we need to make it right. Don't delay your soul salvation. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can be cleansed. We can make it right with God. And when we come to God, we have a willing heart. We have a penitent heart. As a penitent believer, we are willing to crown Christ in our lives and that we can be blessed through obedience of the death, burial, and resurrection of the gospel message, the precepts of the gospel. And if we stand in them and we continue to live according to the faith of the gospel, we will make, make it in eternity with God when this life is past. So I'd just like to say I am very thankful and grateful to be on the program today, and I thank Brother Stevie Butler for allowing me to be able to share a little word. I'll turn it back over to you, Brother Stevie B. God bless everyone. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. 
Is your congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific needs. It's an exciting time for your congregation, and what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665 or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you'd like to have your events and activities announced on this radio broadcast, please contact me at Stevie B's Media Production Studio at 910-491-6405. Or send your email to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, I will not be making any public announcements until further notice for regarding the public meetings or assemblies but I will be making announcements about the events and activities that are happening here on social media. But I do have one announcement for a local congregation in this area at the 500 Helen Street Church of Christ in Easton Fayetteville, North Carolina, have begun meeting for a public meeting on Sunday morning. And their worship service starts at 10 a.m. and their Bible class will begin immediately after their worship service. But there will be no Sunday evening worship and their Wednesday night uh, Bible classes will be on Zoom. Dot com. And they will be having uh, Zoom meetings as well on Sunday morning during their physical worship. On Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a nationwide gospel call that is sponsored by the Church of Christ in Highland Heights from Houston, Texas. And the telephone number to this call is 857-216-6700. And the access code to this call is 328497. This is a nationwide outreach to those who are not members of the Churches of Christ. And the speakers will be presenting a basic salvation message for them to learn what they must do in order to be saved, as well as information about the Churches of Christ. On Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Delcrest Church of Christ in San Antonio, Texas, presents the Women's Virtual Bible Class. And this class will be held on www.zoom.com. And the class ID number is 821-3692-8262. And then daily at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, the Ladies in Christ prayer line will be hosted by the Church of Christ in Lafayette, Louisiana. And the telephone number to this prayer line is 605-472-5203. My co-host on the Gospel Light Radio Show, the airs here on Blog Talk Radio, on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. His name is Steve Cordo. He has a new book entitled God, Grace, and You. And you can order this book from the 21st Century Christian Catalog. There's the Spring Summer Series every fourth Wednesday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. There will be a preacher's panel discussion. Join Minister Michael Crusoe as he moderates a series of discussions featuring seasoned preachers on the from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ. And the topic of discussion is expanding the role of women in Christian worship, a word from the Lord. We have a new show that will begin on August the 24th on the Stevie B's Media Productions for the Word from the Lord radio show. This show will air every fourth Wednesday of the month on for the Word from the Lord. It's called the Kelly Fletcher Show. And this show will air every fourth Tuesday of the month. And just a program reminder, Stevie B's Media Production presents. We're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. And the telephone number to this live show is 713-955-0508. Or you can type in your search bar, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash gospel light radio show. On Tuesday, each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord radio show. And each week we have a guest speaker from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ who will be presenting the lesson from the Word of God. And on the broadcast this evening, Chris Edwards from the McDonald Avenue Church of Christ from Richmond, California. He brought us a lesson earlier in this broadcast. We also have the segment, The Community Corner, 
This segment is designed for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services that they're offering to our communities. Also have three co-hosts on this radio show, Lou Gilbert. He serves as the evangelist for the Overbrook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And my newest co-host, Shauna Otis from Grayway Church of Christ there in Nashville, Tennessee. Her team, the Mid-Tennessee Singles Ministry, they'll be on the air every third Tuesday of the month. And also my newest co-host, Isa Mullins, he serves with the Helen Street Church of Christ here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And then on Thursday evening each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And on this radio show, I have eight co-hosts on this broadcast who will be presenting messages from the Word of God. And each week I have two of my co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking questions from my Shout It Out platform on social media, Facebook, I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on that live show. Then on Friday night, at our new time, from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast Radio Show. And on this radio show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists, the sweet sounds of voices. We also have the Story Glory segment every first Friday of the month. We'll be interviewing the artists that we're playing on this broadcast. And our upcoming uh, segment for the Story Glory segment, the next segment will be on August the 6th. I'm interviewing Clarence Holmes from Decatur, Alabama. He'll be my special guest in that segment. And on this Friday night, I'm counting down my top 20 acapella gospel songs for the month of June and July. My own kind episodes, if you can't catch any of these live shows, where are you getting your favorite podcast from? Just type in your search bar, Stephen B. Media Production, you'll see all of the shows that we're producing on a weekly basis. And some of my, I wouldn't say my favorite, but the most popular platforms where you can find these on-demand episodes is Spotify, Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, YouTube, just to name a few. I have a new sponsorship manager. Her name is Michelle Marco from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If you'd like to be a sponsor for any of these radio shows, just give her a call at 954-687-4705. And I'd like to give a shout out to all of my sponsors. We certainly appreciate them for sponsoring these radio shows. Sharon Norwood from Chicago, Illinois. Bethesda Memorial Front of Directed Crematory Services out of DeSoto, Texas. Stanley Phillips from Little Rock, Arkansas. Cheryl Mara from Charlotte, North Carolina. Yvonne Blazing Cracker Goot from Nashville, Tennessee. Melvin Jackson from High Point, North Carolina. Marquise Holmes from Charlotte, North Carolina. Stephanie Booker Wilson from Greensboro, North Carolina. The first five financial network LLC out of Dallas, Texas. The owner is Mark and Charlotte Carroll. Or Dane's Faith Publishing from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The three E's of Stevie B's Media Production. It is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate. We want to edify. We want to encourage you in a study of God's Word. And that will conclude our program announcements. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Stay tuned. The Community Corner is coming up next. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show.
storms So let me tell you what I do Yeah, yeah I reach up to God's hands And He always pulls me through Yeah I really don't know what it is you're going through But I know the God we serve Yeah, yeah, yeah See, I know Him well enough to know that you can trust the man, his word, praise God's will, I can see that now, I'm a living witness that he can deliver, gotta keep watching, gotta keep waiting, for the silver lining, whoa, I remember a time in my life one day, I was down on my knees, I was crying and praying Then he reached way down, took his big old hands And wiped up my tears away Hold on, hold on, hold on Don't give up, you gotta keep the faith There's gonna be, there's gonna be a brighter day That's what I found out, child Even if you don't see the S-U-N Yeah You can always see the S-O-N Yeah Said you gotta trust And you gotta believe Jesus He's coming again, yeah Can't you see him peeping through the clouds You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. The Community Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, the Community Corner is simply designed to tell our listeners just what products and services are being offered in our communities and how you can contact these various vendors for their services. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised to know just what products and services that people have to offer that are sitting right there among us in our congregations. And this is one of my favorite segments because we get a chance to hear just what are some of the things that people are doing around us to serve in our communities. We've had people on this show who are involved in legal services, uh, authors. We've had college consultants, professional boxers who are community activists. We've had NFL players on this show, casting producers for television shows, farmers, comedians, you name it, we've had them on this broadcast. So we just want to make the saints aware of just what services are available to them on this radio show. My special guest in the community corner is Joe Johnson. His company is called United Credit Services in Charlotte, North Carolina. Joe Johnson, welcome to the community corner. Hey, I truly appreciate it. I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Now, why don't you uh, tell us, first of all, how did you get involved in this, uh, your company what is united credit services yeah it's a pretty simple answer i had horrible credit <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah that'll do it <laughs> that, that'll definitely do it man in 2019 um i was just you know stuck in a really really hard place and i didn't have a car i actually broke down in january 2nd of 2019 and i spent the entire year without a car so having to get around you know transportation city transportation asking friends for cars, walking to and from, you know, getting my groceries. It just got to a point where I was stressed out, and I kept looking in the credit, not understanding how it really worked, um, mm-hmm. but understanding that I needed to get it fixed. And so I tried to go get a car. I got denied. And when my mom, she came on as a co-signer, she got denied. And it was at mm-hmm. that point where my friend introduced me to this business. It just made sense, and I jumped on board, and uh, they actually worked with me, actually increased my score over 100 points uh, my first few months. And at that point, I said, you know what, I want to help other people and empower them as well. So tell us now, how is it that you are helping people to improve their credit scores? Absolutely. So our program, which, uh, like I told you, you know, it's United Credit, um, we pretty much focus on empowering the community through financial literacy. So credit is definitely one aspect of that when you talk about financial literacy, but it's not taught in schools. You know, I'm 26 years old, and growing up, nobody ever took me to the side and said, hey, listen, at a young age, you want to start investing. You want to start budgeting your money, start saving, right? No one taught us those key fundamentals. 
it's kind of expected that you just learn it as you become an adult. And so our program, we specialize in an online portal, and we actually have an entire protection plan that has all the financial literacy tools needed, such as a living will and trust to be able to create generational you know, wealth of your assets. We have a credit restoration where we have a team of attorneys who go through our client's credit report, and they're going to do an analysis, and they're looking for anything from negative and derogatory items such as student loans, which I had. I had horrible student loans, right? Um, they actually helped me remove 26 different accounts off of my credit report of those loans. So that's an example. Anything from repossessions, evictions, divorces, bankruptcies. And once our attorneys actually challenge those items through our dispute letters, our clients get them removed, and those items can, of course, uh, cause our client's score to increase from 20 points to 100 points, and that positions people to, of course, get their dream home, get their dream cars, and just have ultimate freedom, you know? So do you have a live uh, Zoom conference that you're doing these meetings, or is it how, how does this work now? Yes, sir. So it's a little bit of all of that, right? So we have Zoom calls. For example, we actually have one going on at 7 o'clock right now um, through other partners of mine, but we also have videos, um, we all have our own websites, and so, you know, it has all the information as far as the protection plan and everything I kind of said was included. And, yeah, so we pretty much focus on showing people the information, allowing them to see if they can use it for themselves. We do a free consultation where we, you know, find out what's on their files and then help them really see what exactly is needed. Because a lot of people feel like, well, my score is bad. And that's only because I have negative items when really and truly it could be something as simple as credit history. If you don't have any credit history, that makes up 15% of your score. And so we help establish credit as well. A lot of college students, especially in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, you know, they, they don't have any credit at all. And so we help them establish that and get them on the right start as well. So um, to answer your question, yeah, we use Zoom calls and a lot of other platforms, even Facebook sometimes to be able to market. Now, here's the question that our listeners want to know. Everybody wants to know this question. Okay, Joe, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Well, the great thing about this program is that it's affordable. So an average will can cost anywhere from you know $1,000 or more. Um, average credit restoration services cost anywhere from $500 to $1,000. But our program is actually less than $3 a day, only $89 a month to be able to start in our program. Um, so we understand that when your finances are a question, right, sometimes you might not have a full budget to invest into that, but that's what it is. It's an investment. And so we make sure that it's an affordable investment. So, yeah, only $89 to start our program. Okay. Give me your contact information so our listeners can t- contact you if they want to get involved. Yes, sir. So my cell phone number is 704-728-9976. And my email is actually mogul nation inc which is inc at gmail.com and if anybody on listening has instagram you can find me on at it's underscore joe johnson and i respond to all of my dms and i even have credit facts and free tips and games uh, on how to be able to improve your credit and financial wealth hey joe thank you so much for coming on the community corner and sharing your information hey sir thank you for having me i truly appreciate it it was an honor Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Johnson from United Credit Services in Charlotte, North Carolina. Certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys have a blessed night. All right. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. My co-host, Lou Gilberts, is coming up next. The Community Corner. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Will you forgive me? And will you accept me, Jesus, as I kneel at your throne, dear Lord, and all of my brothers, he will always criticize and accuse, but yes, he will, but I know that my Jesus, he will make me brand new and oh, 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 oh. your blood is strong enough to clean me up or the door again. Please wash, wash me free from, from the stain of all of my sins. Thank you. 
I'm ready to ask oh, my baby, Lord. Lord, hear my prayer to me. me. Cause you're the God of a second chance. Yeah, yeah. I see them cry. And they each have a stone. Dear Lord. But you knelt beside me, Jesus, and my fears are all gone, praise God, cause you give me peace, peace Thank you. 
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my co-host Lou Gilbert and his subject, A Little Space of Grace. A little, a little space of grace. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Bible still says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. <clears throat> My friends, have God been good to you? Has God blessed your life? Has God brought you from perhaps a mighty, mighty long way? Certainly we can say so on this evening and give God, give God all of the honor, praise that he deserves for our lives. For we know without him, we would be nothing. Where would I be without the Lord? Where would we be without God in our life? Certainly we uh, bring you greetings from the uh, Church of Christ that meets here at 7630 Woodbine Avenue in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we are called the Overbrook Park Church of Christ. And uh, we're just glad to be here with you uh, tonight. I'm so grateful for our host once again, uh, Brother Stevie B, Stevie Butler, Uh, Again, is doing such a marvelous job program. It touches all over the country and the world. And we're just grateful uh, that he has uh, saw uh, something in me uh, a few years ago and asked me to come and to uh, co-host this uh, portion of the show uh, every third week. And we're grateful for that. We don't take that for granted. We thank him so very, uh, very much. Again, so we're just Uh, Here tonight and our topic is uh, a little space of grace turn with me uh, to the book of Ezra That's right Ezra That's the Old Testament book uh, next to Nehemiah Ezra 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 chapter number nine We'll read a few verses of this great uh, uh, book here narrative uh, Ezra uh, chapter number nine I'm going to begin with verse number one, just to give you the context, and we'll read down to verse number eight or nine. The Bible reads uh, in Ezra chapter nine, verse one. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment. And my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and sat down a stoin. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel, because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat a stoin until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. And I said, O oh my God, I am ashamed, and blush up, blush to up to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our heads. And our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day. And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage but have extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us 
a reviving, to set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. It's from verse number eight that will lift our subject a little space of grace. A little space of grace. Of course, friends, when we talk about grace uh, as it enters the Christian life that you and I know, uh, it's chiefly a New Testament term, uh, charis, uh, in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul writes uh, and he uses the term over a hundred times when he wants to stress the central feature of God's relation to fallen humans. But, you know, the Hebrew scriptures do include terms that approach the understanding of grace as it appears in our Christian story. Here we have grace, meaning mercy, pardon, and compassion. Thus we witness the true nature of God. A little space of grace Sometimes in our lives God grants us A little space of grace To keep us from Giving up the fight Even when the fight we're in Is due to our own sin And negligence God's grace shines through Because of his true nature For God is not willing That any should perish That's grace We are grateful that God doesn't give us what we deserve. You know, there are times when we do get what we deserve. We would know that there are more times that we don't get what we truly deserve. At times when we get grace, when we deserve the grace. We get kindness when we deserve wrath. We get mercy when we deserve punishment. We get God's reign when we deserve a severe drought. We get a piece of heaven when we deserve the pit of hell. That's just the nature of the God we serve. We see it daily in our lives and even throughout this creation. Think about this. As destructive as the hurricane may be, there is always calm after. And as devastating as the earthquake is, there is always a glimmer of hope when life is recovered. And as horrible as the crime scene may be, it could always have been worse. And thus we say the very familiar, there but for the grace of God go I. In the many stories of the scriptures, we see an evidence, the evidence of a little space of grace. The first Adam, the first man, was extended grace when God made them coats of skins. Noah found grace in the eyes of God when humankind was wicked continually. Abraham was given a son in his old age to express God's grace. God was graceful to uh, Jacob as he wrestled with the angel through the night. Joseph found grace in the eyes of his master because of God's favor on his life. It was by God's grace that Moses saw the backside of the glory of God while in the cleft of the rock and covered by God's hand. A little space of grace and mercy was given to King David after his Sin with Bathsheba. In the Psalms, we get a glimpse of the grace and the favor of God displayed. Psalm 84, verse 11 For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk. Even we get a glimpse in the prophets. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15, where God says through the prophet, I am greatly displeased that the nations with the nations that take my grace for granted over and over God's grace pardon mercy and compassion is seen and although his benevolence should never be taken 
for granted. I, I'm grateful daily to be a recipient of his goodness. I'm thankful that even when I fall short of God's grace, something we all do, that same grace is sufficient. I think it was the Apostle Paul was given grace, uh, was given a little space of grace, even when he was plagued by a messenger of Satan. We read in Second Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Then he says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. A little space of grace. This lesson is simply about the goodness of God. Hasn't God been good? On your worst day, God is good. The favor of God, this text is about. The favor of God, the favor God showed a beleaguered, weary, even sinful nation, uh, one who was often rebellious, stubborn, and contrary a nation in the midst of their captivity because of sin. We need to remember that God showed his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did you get that? While we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thus is Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8. I believe we all can relate in some way to this story in Ezra. You know, as a parent, I can relate. As a preacher and leader, I can relate. You may be a business owner. You may be a father. You may be a mother. You may be someone in position. You certainly can relate. But I need you to see in the text today, once again, the very nature of God. And although our sin, may be over our heads and has grown up to heaven, he still doesn't punish us like we deserve. This is what uh, the scribe Ezra is praying about. Although we may be enslaved by our own habits and passions, he still covers us with his love. Aren't you glad about that? Although our eyes may be bloodshot from sin, he still gives us light to revive our eyes. Although it appears that everything has fallen apart, he still provides a good measure of strength to hold, to hold on and stay connected. And although we may be walking in the valley of the shadow of death, he still provides for us a table in the present, in the sight of our enemies. This text, again, is about grace. It's about the faithfulness of God shown to the people of God, even when they walked a path that was contrary to God's will. This text is about providing a little space of grace for the people he calls his own. Let me just give you uh, the backdrop of this text here in Ezra and the times in which it was sent. Now, of course, Ezra is very closely related to Nehemiah in type of narrative. Uh, I've been studying with the church on Wednesday nights uh, the study of the book of Nehemiah, and we know that Nehemiah was uh, the governor given permission to return to Jerusalem. Uh, He was a servant of the king, and he was made the governor when he went to Jerusalem uh, to rebuild the walls. Uh, Ezra, however, we believe, arrived in Jerusalem some 12 or 13 years prior or before Nehemiah. Uh, Ezra was given permission by the king of Persia, by God's design, going back a few kings even to Cyrus, uh, to go to Jerusalem to teach the word of God. So they were in Jerusalem at some point in time together, Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, Ezra was a man who could be referred to as a positive role model for change. He was a scribe, and as a scribe, he was highly skilled uh, and had great intellect in the law of God. Ezra chapter 7, verse 6 describes him as a ready scribe. Uh, uh, He was good at 
what he did. He was a brilliant scribe and interpreter of God's word. Uh, A quick perusal of the books of Ezra and Nehemiah will show that God's people had betrayed God's trust. And of course, they had been sold into, uh, adopt, they're sold into uh, the other uh, nation. They had sold out to, to idolatry and sin, and they were worshiping, even at this time, worshiping uh, false gods. They didn't know their native language. They were mingling their blood in marriage with the pagans, and they had uh, fallen beneath their privilege as the people of God. Ezra was sent to teach the law, teach the word of God, and bring uh, the glory of God's will, way, and word to the people. He came to help them change their circumstance. I don't know about you. You know, the gospel, Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, of, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. God's word is designed to change our lives. God's word is designed to change our minds. God's word is designed to change our thinking. God's word is designed to change our status in the world. Uh, And in our text, which is really, it is a prayer. It's it's a prayer from uh, the text. We find that uh, Ezra heard some news, and the news uh, pained him to his heart, and he sat down and he prayed. Uh, So in this prayer, Ezra again had received, had recently arrived in Jerusalem, and he received news that like Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 1, caused considerable mourning. Ezra was a man of deep faith and conviction, a man like Nehemiah, uh, that not that only wanted to please God uh, and for God to get all of the glory. He desired the people of God to remain pure and in service and devotion to God. Uh, every preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ wants the same thing. Every every gospel elder, every every uh, leader in God's church wants the same thing for the people of God to remain pure in their service and devotion to God. Uh, He hears the news that the people, and it's interesting that the Bible says really the leaders were leading the way. Listen now, people play follow the leader. Uh, If you're a leader of God's people, somebody is following you or else you would not be a leader. And so it's very important that as leaders of God's people that we live our lives in a way that when somebody is following us, we're leading the right way. But he hears news that the people of God and many of the leaders were leading the way, the people of God were living in a way that was totally against the commands of God. And it was during this prayer that Ezra focuses really on the goodness, favor, and the grace of God despite their sin. He paints a clear picture, a clear image of the God of grace and favor. Now, uh, I'm just going to show you, uh, I want you to see uh, what Ezra does here. Ezra uses uh, uh, some vivid images, about five vivid images uh, in this uh, passage of 8 and 9, of Ezra 9, verses 8 and 9. He uses five vivid images uh, to picture what God's grace has done for the people who had returned to the land. The first image is that of a remnant. Uh huh. The Bible says that again, God left. He left them a remnant. Uh, again, he says, now uh, for a little space of grace have been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, we have to understand that God has always left a remnant. Ah, God preserved a remnant like a piece of cloth 
from the robe uh, uh -huh, of Jeroboam, if you will, that was to be kept safe. Uh, just read in your time, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 26 through about 40. But understand that throughout uh, the Jewish history, even when the nation turned from God, he always preserved a remnant that remained faithful to him, and from that remnant, he would make a new beginning. Uh, we see this in First Kings chapter number 19, verse number 18, where God has to tell Elijah, Elijah got to feeling himself. Elijah got to thinking that he was all by himself. He fell into a depression, and he said, I, only I am the only one that serves you. But God had to remind him in First Kings chapter 19, verse 18, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. Understand, my brothers and sisters, that God has a remnant even on today. Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 9, back then again, the Bible says, except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we would have become, been as Sodom, and we would have been like unto Gomorrah. God has always had a remnant, aren't you? Glad at that. We should remember that there's always a remnant. God, the people of God, uh, somewhere on this earth, somewhere are devoted to the will and the work of God, no matter the circumstance, no matter where they are, no matter what happens to them, no matter what trial, no matter the, the suffering, no matter the waiting. Like uh, Daniel during the time of captivity, Daniel remained faithful to God. Like the Hebrew brothers during the time of captivity, they may they remained faithful to God. Even in the New Testament, awaiting on God in Luke chapter number two and verse number thirty six, the Bible says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanel. Ah, the, of the tribe of Asher, and she was of a great age and lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And as she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, uh, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in uh, that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him, all, to all that all them that looked for redemption in Israel. What am I saying there? She was waiting for the Messiah. Somebody was waiting and praying. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that somebody, a remnant somewhere, is praying for the church. Ah, you may think nobody else is, but somebody is praying uh, in your church. Somebody praying uh, for you. I'm glad that somebody pray for me a remnant somewhere when folk are acting like they have no uh-huh left in their minds remember that god has a remnant somewhere praying for you and praying for uh that god would get the glory and so not only that ezra speaks about uh, a nail in his holy place now the image there is that of a nail pounded into the sanctuary wall or a tent peg driven into the ground. What does it depict? It depicts security and stability. You see, ah, the Jews going back into their own land had a measure of security and stability, and they had a function in the holy place of God, back in their holy land, if you will. God had brought the remnant back to their own land and gave them favor with the king and the local officials. Aren't you glad about that? Listen now, God uh, God has allowed us even today to have a nail still in his holy place. Uh, God extended that grace to them. Let's remember, church, that through it all, we are still here. If you're sitting out there listening to me, uh, you are still here. Uh, we are still where we are in Philadelphia by the grace of God. We still have a nail in his holy place. We still have a name 
in the community. We still have people that seek us out as a house of God. We still have a secure place and stability. That's the grace of God. And then he talks about the light. God gave light to their eyes uh uh-huh by 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 taking them out of the babylonian captivity and returning them to their own land god gave them light to their eyes well what do you mean light to their eyes to have light in your eyes means a, a new life it means a joy having a new day if you will a psalm Chapter 34, the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof ah, be and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I have sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him and were enlightened. Their faces were not ashamed. That's talking a shame. That's talking about joy when your lights when your eyes light up with joy you know it's like a child whose eyes light up with the joy of seeing its mother it's like a father coming home from a long journey and watching the eyes of his wife light up it's like the weary traveler in the night whose eyes lighten with joy at the sight of a city in the distance. I don't know about you. I'm glad that God can still give me some joy, even though what I'm going through might not be the best thing. God can still give you joy, brothers and sisters, and lighten your eyes. Next, he uh, He gives the next image, of, uh, which is like the former one, to give us a little reviving in our bondage, to give us a little reviving in our bondage. You see, the presence of the remnant in the land was sort of like a resurrection from the dead. God can make the dead come to life, or spiritually, if you will. Their departure from Babylon was like uh, the resurrection of a corpse from the grave. So here they are back in the land of the land their ancestors were taken from, back in the place of their origin, back where they had died, uh, uh, understand, hear me well, uh, and now they are alive and given an opportunity to start afresh. That's new life, and that, my friends, is what God can do uh, to us uh, today. That has to be the grace of God to revive in the midst of their bondage. God gave them light. God gave them hope, finding hope in hopeless situations, finding life among the dead, finding liberty while in slavery, experiencing joy in the midst of sorrow. Only God can bring this about. God can help us while we are in all of our tribulation, says Paul, says the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted in God. What am I saying? God can give us hope in our hopeless situation. They were in bondage, but God still gave them some life. God gave them a resurrection, even though they were dead because they were carried away. Now God is allowing them to come alive again. If that ain't God's grace, I don't know what is. And then Ezra's final image uh, is that of a wall uh, in Judah and Jerusalem, a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And that really speaks, uh, friends, of the protection of God, the protection God has for his people. I like what Numbers says in Numbers chapter 22, verse 24, talks about, again, a wall being on this side and a wall being on that side. Aren't you glad of that today, that God uh, gives us a wall of protection? Uh, A wall is a defense. Uh, A wall uh, is a, a type of deliverance. A wall is for protection. A wall is for safety. A wall is a fortress. A wall is a help. A wall is a fence. Aren't you glad about that? Isaiah 26, 1, it's a strong 
city. Isaiah 60 and verse number 18, your name, uh, your, you will name your walls deliverance. Aren't you glad about that, that God protected his people wherever they were? They were in bondage. God protected them. They thought they didn't have any hope. God was still with them and protected them. He worked with those in the hearts of those kings, going back to Cyrus and Darius and Xerxes and, and uh, uh, Artesiris at the Zari, uh, to give, uh, to gain them a release from bondage and security in their own land, these strong, powerful rulers. But God in his sovereignty used them to fulfill his purpose and even used them to protect his people. I'm trying to tell you today, God still provides for us a wall of safety. He still protects his people. I like what the psalmist says in Psalm, David says in Psalm chapter number 27, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came against me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So when hosts should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. And this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of his temple. What am I saying? I'm saying that God provides for us a, a wall, a hump of Judah and Jerusalem. That means God is going to give us a grace. God is going to bless us. So hasn't God been good to us? Hasn't God blessed us? Hasn't God brought us from a mighty long way this past year? God is still the God of grace and mercy. He still extends to us more grace than we ever, ever, ever deserve. He still provides a little space of grace. We don't deserve it, but we're thankful to receive it anyway. I'm glad that while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. I'm glad that in the fullness of time, God sent his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that uh-huh, that we might receive uh, the adoption of sons. I'm glad that God's grace is still sufficient. I'm glad that God, God had mercy on me and put me into the ministry. I'm glad that although I was the chief of sinners, God's grace rested upon me. Each of us uh, living is living with a little space of grace today. It could be worse. Matter of fact, it should be worse, but I thank God. I thank God it's not as bad as it should be. And so again, we all have come through a lot over this past year. We've experienced loss of regret pain and sickness. We've witnessed the suffering and trauma brought on by this debilitating, disastrous disease called COVID-19. In some ways, we've ex advanced. In other ways, we have lagged. But we ought to thank God that God has not given up on us yet. Understand that God, even now, even now, God has given us a space, a little space of grace. Even when our sins reach to the heavens, God gives us this space, this time because of the goodness of God. My friends, it's my prayer that you realize and understand that we're all living by the grace of God. But one of these old days, one of these old days, when God de declares the time will be no more, he'll dispatch his angel. And he'll put one foot on the land and the other on the sea and declare time will be no more. There will be no grace after that. So the Bible says, in the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You come today by hearing God's word, believing that same word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died, was buried, rose again for you. Hear, believe, repent of your sins, confess Christ, then go down into the watery grave of baptism. For the remission, the removal, the stripping away of your sins. Find the Church of Christ in your neighborhood. If you're here in Philadelphia, we're at 7630 Woodbine Avenue in the city of Philadelphia. Wherever you are, let your fingers do the walking on the text or on the, on the website and find the Church of Christ. And tell the preacher, I want to be baptized. I want to know more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
uh uh-huh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh uh-huh, and uh, once you hear that and you make up your mind, they will baptize you, and you will become a member of the body, the church of Christ. May God bless you. May he bless you until next time. I turn it over now to the very capable hands of our illustrious host, Stevie B. May God bless you. May he bless you real good. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. This may be the last time. This may be the last time, children. This may be the last time. It may be the last time. I don't know. This may be the last time. This may be the last time, children. This may be the last time. Maybe the last 
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank both of my speakers on the show tonight, Chris Edwards and my co-host, Lou Gibbs. And in the community corner, my special guest, Joe Johnson. I appreciate everyone who participated on the show this evening. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to put this show on during the week. It is my prayer that these lessons this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened. Because you're not only tuned into this radio broadcast, but you've given yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continued blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real Real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. On behalf of my co-hosts, Isa Mullen, Shauna Otis, and Lou Gilbert, we really do appreciate your love and support for these programs. I'm your host, Steve R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And if you miss me from singing, sing it. and you can't find me nowhere, nowhere. Come on up to glory. glory. I'll be singing the best. Yes, I will. And I know the Lord, He will grieve me over yonder, over on the other shore. To glory. glory, I'll be praising the best. I'll be praising the best. Her the of the day, Lord. The glory. glory, I'll be singing the best. Yes, I will, and I, I, I know the Lord. He will grieve So glory, I'll be praising up there. I'll be praising up there. I'll be praising up there. Down on my knees, down on my knees, Lord. I'll be praising up there. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show, episode 203.
It ain't all good, but it's going to be good. Because I love him. I'm on it. Love him. But I'm doing fine. And I trust him. Everything ain't well, but it's going to be swell. In the fullness of time. Everything's gonna be fine. Whoa! In the fullness of time, everything is alright. Sometimes I feel like I'm a rundown man, but I'm looking up where well. I know him. I'm trying to be holy. I wanna be worthy, so he'll so he know me. I look around me and it seems like evil wins. In the fullness of time, I know everything's gonna be fine. Oh, in the fullness, in the fullness of time, everything is alright. Everything, everything, everything is alright. 